my name is Gavin Davis. I'm from uh, the Health and Safety Training Team, the Ulrika Philly Council. Uh, we are putting together a number of workshops uh, based around basic first aid to help people out who can't do face-to-face -face training at the moment. Starting with management of an unconscious casualty. Upon discovering the casualty, we check for dangers. If no dangers are present, we check for response. Hello, can you hear me? Are you awake? Can you open your eyes? There's no response, we can shout for help. Help! We then need to obtain an airway, so head tilt and chin lift. And then we're going to check for normal breathing for up to 10 seconds. Looking at the rise and fall of the chest, movement of the diaphragm and feeling and listening for any air escaping. Upon that point, hopefully our help will arrive and we shall send them to get an ambulance and a defib and ask them to come straight back. If there is no breathing, we will immediately start CPR. This is an adult, so I'll start with my compressions. 30 at the depth of 5 to 6 centimetres and we're aiming for 100 to 120 a minute. Make sure we use a face shield or a pocket mask. Pinch the nose, blow to the mouth. This takes roughly one to two seconds for the chest to inflate. Continue with compressions. Okay, we only stop the process if a casualty recovers or shows signs of recovery. That could be coughing, movement, or possibly even sitting up. Okay, if this happens, then obviously we stop the compressions. If they don't sit up, but they are showing signs of recovery, we will check the times of breathing. If that breathing is still present, but they still remain unconscious, we can place them in the recovery position, which we will have a link showing you a short video of how to do so. Okay, other reasons to stop would be paramedics or other medical professionals come and take over from you. If you are working in a team with other first aiders, where you're working roughly two minutes at the time between you. Uh, dealing with vomit, which is a case of turning the casualty onto the side, under control, allowing the vomit to drain, just making sure that everything is clear, placing back over carefully, and rechecking to see if there's normal breathing. If there's breathing present, again, recovery position. If not, continue the cycle of CPR. Um, other reasons would be the arrival of defib, where we need to apply the pads, and also when we deliver the shock. If you become totally exhausted, you can stop to regain some breath, and then please try and go again. Um, these are the main reasons why we would stop CPR. The only other time would be if you were in immediate danger or your casualty was and you needed to leave the scene. Okay, that was for an adult. I'm just going to swap the mannequins around. As I'm aware that we are now working with mostly schools. Okay, and go through the principle of child. So again, we check for danger. For safe to approach response. Hello, can you hear me? Can you open your eyes? If there's no response. Again, carefully open up the airway, head tilt, chin lift. Check for normal breathing. Again, it's 10 seconds. We shout for help. If our help arrives, again, we will ask for an ambulance. Defib if one is available, and can they come straight back? Slight difference when we work with a child, where we initially will give five rescue breaths before compressions. Same principles. With our compressions, it's still 30 to 2 from now on. Hand centered of the chest. You can use one or two hands. It's now a third the depth of the chest. And 
now a little bit two rescue breaths. Continue the cycle. Again, I will continue with exactly the same protocol as the adult. This is the basic first aid and this is the choking section. Okay, whether we're dealing with an adult or child, both are going to be the same. If you have a, a, a casualty who is will encourage them to cough, that's not going to, if that's not working, it means the blockage is going to be total and they're going to collapse relatively quickly unless we deal with it. So initially, we will lean our casualty forward and we deliver up to five back slaps between the shoulder blades. Now this has to be fairly vigorous, but remember, it'll vary in the size of your casualty. Make sure we check in in between, just to make sure that it hasn't dis dislodged already. If that is unsuccessful, we then resort to abdominal thrusts. So I'm gonna place my fist just into the diaphragm, yeah, just above the stomach, and it's going to come in and up in quite a vicious movement. Again, up to five. Then the process will be repeated. So we'll return to the back slaps and then abdominal thrust. Now, if this does not work and is unsuccessful, we need to phone for an ambulance as quickly as possible. Plus, they are likely to become unconscious very, very quickly and fall to the floor, at which point we will start CPR that you've seen in earlier videos. If you have a child, sometimes it can be useful, if possible, if you can lead them over your legs while delivering the back slaps. This enables gravity to give us a little helping hand. Okay, so the same principle, but you can move on the legs. Um, and you continue this process, obviously until they go unconscious or the object is released. Hi again, this time uh, in this session we're going to cover uh, wounds and bleeding. Um, most wounds that we're likely to come across uh, in the school setting will likely be grazes or small cuts. Um, you'll note that wearing gloves to make sure you've got those on. Um, we need to look at any wound first of all. Um, problems that tend to come with cuts and grazes will maybe see some grit or other substances in there. So we need to wash them uh, to make sure they're clear. Uh, we can use an antiseptic wipe or wipe over there as well if you've got one. If it's a large area, um, that would be too, you know, too big for a plaster realistically, we can put a dressing on, a uh, sterile dressing up in place. If it's a little bit smaller, we can just put a, a hypoallergenic plaster over the top of it. If the wound is more significant, then we would look to use a sterile dressing or whatever we have available and apply pressure directly to that wound for at least 10 minutes. Uh, Open if that stems and stops the bleeding. We will then replace that with a second dressing. Which we would apply in this fashion. Note that I've exposed the wound. Be careful if there was anything in the wound that we wouldn't dress directly over it. We would use two dressings either side and apply the pressure to the sides of it. Carefully dressing them gently over the top and requesting medical assistance. Little tips to remember once we dress in. Ideally, we like to tie off on top of the wound as long as there's nothing in there. Please check to make sure that the casualty can have some feeling. It's not done too tight in the fingers. There's no pins and needles. We can sometimes pinch just gently on the ends of the fingers or the nail bed to see if it's capillary refill. So. If we pinch gently, it'll go white and then go back a pinky colour. 
if that happens, we know there's significant blood flow through and through there. Um, if the dressing doesn't stop it, it will start spooking again. We can apply a second over the top in the same manner. If in any doubts, seek medical advice. Hi, in this session, we're going to deal with management of anaphylaxis, which is a massive allergic reaction. Um, and in this case, the treatment we're going to use is going to be the EpiPen. There are other pens available, um, and they all work very much in the same principle. Okay, we normally recognize anaphylaxis, uh, certainly in schools. We should have information on whether our, our children are allergic to anything. It's normally foodstuffs, it can be bee stings, bites, etc. And there's a number of other things. Uh, it's normally characterized by swelling of the face, blotches, difficulty in breathing, wheezy breathing, uh, nausea, etc. Um, the key to this is recognizing it very quickly. If you recognize it, make sure somebody's phone for an ambulance. Get hold of an EpiPen when it is available. Get the child or adult, same principle, sat down. Um, get the EpiPen. Take the safety cap off the back. Up, up, out the thigh. We are going to inject. Okay, just in a jabbing motion there. You will hear the click. Hold it in. Okay, for up to 10 seconds. Release. And if you're wearing gloves, just gently massage the site. If not, perhaps you can encourage the individual to do it for themselves, just to disperse it. And then we will monitor them very carefully. Hopefully they will see uh, some sense of recovery. Ensure the ambulance has been run. Um, and then give the pen to the paramedics when they arrive explaining what has happened. Hi, in this section we're going to cover splinters. If we were to come across splinters, um, first thing we need to do is make sure we've got the appropriate PPE on. So we put our gloves on, take a look at where it is, um, wash the area okay, with warm soapy water, get a tweezers if one is available, and get it as close to the splinter as possible, pull out in the direction that it's gone in. Gently encourage bleeding by gently squeezing the area. This helps get any dirt or any bacteria that may be in there out of the surface. We clean again and then if need be we'll apply a plaster um, and also ask parents or guardians to check the immunization records. If our splinter is embedded into the skin and we can't get to it, we'll just place a plaster over the top of it and then advise um, parents or guardians to seek medical advice um, for the removal of that splinter. Hi, in this section we're going to cover a, a couple of topics, fractures, dislocations, sprains and strains, and then contusions and bruises and the treatment of them. Um, with our fractures and dislocations, fractures in particular can be difficult unless it's open, where bones protrude into actually notice, and we only know we can tell for sure would be an x-ray. So if in any doubt around any of those, uh, we will send uh, that person or that child um, to hospital to have an x-ray. What we would do in the interim while we're waiting is we'd immobilize, uh, we can get some ice or a cold compress, wrap it in something, apply gently to the area for 10 minutes. This will also apply for uh, muscle strains um, and ligament uh, sprains. We would apply ice to that area as well uh, using the rice principle which is rest, ice, compression and elevation. We'd only elevate if we're able to. If we suspect it's a fracture or something else around that area, we tend not to elevate. If we're going to use an ice pack, just remember to wrap it in something so we don't have an ice spoon. And also with the compression, we don't want all of that on too tight. Okay, so we can use a, a bandage or some people may have cling film available to just hold it on, uh, but make sure that isn't too tight. If we think in of dislocations, um, we would be looking around areas where there would be joints. So we're talking ankles, knees, possibly wrists, elbows, and shoulders. We'll normally see a great form of deformity looking completely different to the other side. Uh, we don't relocate any of those injuries, um, supported where the, the casualty is comfortable. This may be a case of using um, their top, just hold in place, or potentially, if they're willing and you're able to, apply in a sling, which we can see there. 
Uh, four brooms in, similar principle for treatment. We've all seen the brooms. Um, it'll come out, you can see it. Apply a cold compress or an ice pack, again wrapped in something uh, for up to 10 minutes. And that should be enough for most cases. To do. But if it's anything more serious or if you're in any doubt, seek medical aid. And again, in this session, uh, we're going to continue on from where we left with the CPR with now the availability of the AED or of DFib. Okay, so someone would have been doing CPR. In this case, because of the circumstances we're in, I'm going to work as a loan operator, although we could work in normal times with two people. Um, as soon as I have the DFib available, I need to prep my casualty. So inside our prep kit, this can be located depending on your model, in the case, or sometimes attached. We should have a tough cut scissors. If we have any clothing, it needs to be cut off and removed. Then I'm quickly going to do some checks to see if the area is dry. If not, I will wipe down the area really briefly just to take off surface water. I'm going to check for any hair. If need be, where our pads are going to be applied, I will roughly shave that area. I'll also look for any patches. If there's any patches there at all, just remove them um, and place them to one side. If all that's clear, we will apply the defib. As this is a training defib, the pads are not actually attached, but in most models, these will already be attached inside. If they're not, and you just place them in, they can only go in one way. So just take your time and look at it. Unit okay. We have on this one an Remove adult clothes from and the pediatric Place switch. Exactly as shown in the picture. Press so we are peel off our pads, following the picture diagrams, put them in place. Take the ample um, gel Analyzing to hold them in problem. place. Do not touch the patient. Follow the prompts. As soon as it says don't touch patient, paralyzed, we stand away. Make sure everybody else is standing away as well. Charging. Do not touch the patient. The machine is going to charge. Wait for the command to shock. Press the red flashing button now. Make sure everyone's clear deliver and then deliver our shock. Shock delivered. It is safe to touch the patient. If needed, begin CPR. If there's no recovery, we'll start our CPR like shown earlier. Cycle as shown earlier. I'm just going to knock this off a second so I can finish talking to you. Okay, the metronome there is just an aid. Don't worry too much if you're completely in line or just outside of it, it's there to help you. It's just a guide. Once we've delivered a shock, if the machine says to deliver a shock, we will have to do two minutes of CPR. The machine will count you through. Then it will complete the process again by saying stand clear, don't touch the patient, and it'll analyze again. Okay, that will keep on going until either we get um, a casualty who recovers or there's no shockable rhythm anymore. Uh, if that's the case, it will just tell you to do CPR and you follow the protocols that we did earlier. Okay? Some of these kits will be different, okay, but they all work exactly the same. It just may be your pads. Um, and your prep kit may be in a slightly different place. It might be a good idea for you to familiarize yourself with whatever kit you've got on site, just to make sure. Uh, there's one thing to remember with pads, they will have dates on. Please make sure that you check your dates. If they are out of date, please try and replace them. But in the interim, they can be used until you have new pads available.